In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to install, set up, and configure Zero Tier uh, on a remote computer that's not on my local network. Um, if the computer is on your local network, this may actually be easier to do. Uh, so first step, you're going to want to go to zerotier.com. Uh, if you don't have an account, go ahead and click sign up and follow the prompts um, to make your account. Uh, once you create your account, you'll be given a uh, network, they call it. Uh, basically, you can you know, log into your account and go ahead and off devices and whatnot. I already have an account set up and um, I'm actually walking through setting this up on uh, a computer of my own. So I'm actually going to use my own dashboard. I'll just go ahead and blur out the computer information, uh, but I'll be sure to show you what it looks like with computers actually in there, uh, what you can do with those computers, um, some of the features that are used for paid version, and so on and so forth. So first, uh, what we need to do is create your account. Once you've created your account, um, we need to then go ahead and connect to the computer that you need to install the Zero Tier agent on. Um, and just to give you a little preface, uh, Zero Tier is basically like creating like your own VPN uh, private network. Um, so basically, you can use this to create like your own little subgroup of computers or a little network. So let's say you want to connect to computers that are at a remote location, like a production plant, a family member's house. Um, you know, or any type of remote location, or even um, in, like in your local network, um, you can use it to, you know, change IPs and stuff like that. So, you know, there's different use cases and whatnot. Uh, for my own example, I use it to remote into the computer to do work uh, and stuff like that. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. It's very convenient um, and it's very simple to set up. So let's go ahead and begin. So on the remote computer, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead, open up your web browser and go to zerotier.com. Uh, just to let you know, the delay in the computer is just because uh, this is a remote connection uh, to my own server. So I'm setting this up on a virtual machine um, and then I can remote into the actual virtual machine using RDP uh, once I get zero tier set up. So we'll go to the download section and then you'll want to go ahead and click on close. We'll click on Windows or the other operating system that you're going to install it on. And then we'll go ahead and once it's finished, we'll click on the actual downloadable agent. So then that way it will go ahead and open the file. And right now it's just going through the prompts to install it. We'll just go ahead and hit yes. And we're just waiting for the time to expire here to let Zero Tier 1 install. Alright, so it looks like it had finished installing. Um, that's one thing with Zero Tier that it's pretty much like a silent install after you actually start it. So um, you'll see that it's installed by the little icon down here or you can go to the start icon and you should be able to see it within the recently added. If you don't see it there, just go to Z and you should see it in Zero Tier. All right, so since we do have Zero Tier open in our task tray, let's go ahead wait for the weather prompt to go away and we'll go ahead and right click on it and you want to do um, join new network. So this is asking you to enter a 16 digit network ID to join. Um, so basically this is after you set up your account. Um, Zero Tier will actually provide you your, um, your uh, connection info. So let's go ahead and get connected. So here I have two uh, networks. As you can see, these are the nodes also known as the uh, um, endpoints or connections. I'm going to go ahead and click on my main network here um, and this is blurred out for you but for me this is showing some type of network ID um, and this is the network ID that you want to provide to your um, endpoint. So we'll go ahead real quick and just 
copy this, and I remembered I actually can't copy paste uh, from here. I can try it, but yeah, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to actually type this manually. We'll go ahead, now that I got it in, as you see, join prompted, and we can right click on it again. And um, one thing to also note is make sure that start at UI login is checked, um, especially if you're working on a remote computer and you um, don't have like physical access to it and that's not checked, um, it you know will prohibit you to not allow or you know connect remotely. So now um, we went through and we added the network in ID in. As you can see here, it changed. Um, within the menu prompt so now we have um, a little uh, network ID connection and um, it actually shows uh, you know different settings that you can choose here the Ethernet and all that information um, again it's kind of blurred out on my side because if I do show you it then you may be able to connect to my network and stuff like that and I can get more into the management side once I do show you the portal uh, which is actually up next so let me go ahead and show you that so coming back into the portal, um, you can actually change your name here. I actually left the default name, um, so I will leave that. Um, you can choose, you know, your managed routes, your auto assign IPs. You can, you know, change a lot of different things, which I've all left um, set up. Um, and this is sort of the meat and potatoes, the members section here. So you can see this is 18. Um, nodes basically that I have um, connected to my account um, so these are all different computers um, it has you know their IP when it was last seen the version that it has you know the actual physical IP of that device it has a trash can which you can permanently delete it and it also has a little eye where you can go ahead and enable or disable the view um, from that device so with this um, if you scroll down typically at the bottom it will be um, there will be another computer or it'll be a blank so for example this one here um, you probably won't see it as it may be blanked out but I think I'll leave this one it doesn't have a name um, or anything like that um, so how I typically will do it is I'll look for the one that doesn't have a name um, sometimes at the bottom or top it will automatically be added but this one's not uh, for the short name here just going to go ahead and type LHTPC and you can add in a little description saying you know this is the virtual machine that I'm going to use for vid future videos um, and once you go ahead and add in that information um, you can add in some managed IP range if you want but I typically leave it blank as I leave, let the program do all the auto configuration and this is your auth checkbox here um, so this either allows you connection you can see it here in the green or red if you don't have it checked which means red you don't have connection green you do so with this one we want to allow connection and we should be all set on the admin portal side another note while I'm in here is that you can manually add a member into this um, by by actually copying the name that's shown here. So if we go back to our endpoint, we right click on our agent and this address here, the CA dot dot dot, again it's blurred out for you, but this top um, option here, you can copy that address and you can actually put that address into here, into the management portal under manually add member and then you can hit add new member and then once you copy the network ID into the actual endpoint, um, it will auto connect, like auto authorize and everything like that. So that's another way you can go ahead and add it, but I find it simplest to just add your network ID into the endpoint and then go back and authorize that endpoint to actually connect. So at this point, these two computers are actually um, connected on their own virtual private network. Uh, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is say remote and or allow remote connections to this computer so in this instance I want to be able to remote into this computer uh, as mentioned this is a remote computer and I'm gonna go ahead and go to change settings and I'm gonna go ahead and say allow remote connections to this computer 
And one thing that I need to remember about RDP is that the user account needs to have a password. If it does not, um, if it does not have a password, then when I try to RDP to that computer, it actually won't let me connect. So if I go to change password, and I need to actually add in a password to this account. So we'll say password, and we'll do add. And here I'm just typing in the password that I want to set for this account. And for the password hint, I'll just put hint, and we'll do finish. All right, and as you can see, I'm already using a remote desktop connection, but we'll just go ahead and do um, another computer. So I named that one, actually didn't name that one. So if I go back to our remote session and I come down here to um, our system, we can actually grab the name here, uh, this odd name as what it is now. I'll leave that and I can actually make another video on how to rename a computer. Um, but I'll go ahead and show you how to connect. And I actually do have the um, desktop name pre-fills here. Um, one thing to note when you're actually remoting into um, uh, a computer when you have just a local account set up, you want to make sure that you're um, targeting just that local account. So if I go under show options and do uh, username, you can actually just do period backslash and then the account name. And then you'll go ahead and click connect. And once you do, it'll ask you for the passwords, which we, you can set, which you had to preset. Um, if you don't have a password on account, you won't get this far. So if you don't have a password, go ahead, set a password, and then try again. Uh, but this is actually our good to go screen here. This is a certificate authentication, uh, which we know that this is our own computer. So we're going to go ahead and connect. And there we go. So we now we have zero tier open. This is that computer that we were working on before. I can verify the desktop name here and we should be good to go remote into this computer at any point. Um, and one thing that I would change is changing the sleep schedule. So power and sleep settings. And you'll want to just change this to never. And that's it. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to set up zero tier, go through the manage portal, show you how to off devices, show you how to connect to them. Um, go ahead and show you how to, within this instance, at least remotely connect through RDP. There's many more use cases for zero tier, such as, you know, cup server, um, print servers, things like that. There's also, you know, being able to remotely connect through multiple locations and stuff like that. So zero tier is a huge, huge program that's also free um, that allows you to connect multiple devices and stuff like that. Make sure to look out for more tutorials on our learn how to page. And with that, I will talk to you guys later. Make sure you leave a comment, like, subscribe, and bye for now.